What's up guys, today I'm gonna show you how you can create this brain rot graphics kind of effect. I think it looks insane. I came up with that this morning and I thought it just looked crazy. So I gotta show this to you guys. Right before we start, if you like effects just like these, then I need to put you onto my brand new bundle, which is the ultimate brain rot bundle. With over 60 presets, this bundle has everything you need to get those brain rot distortion edits. First off, we have the brain rot essentials. It has 30 plus presets that are gonna give you like those distortion, those brain rot kind of like filters to it. It looked absolutely crazy. This is the best thing I've ever made. Then we have the Brain Rot Text and Titles Pack, which are made of 30 plus text animations. They're completely drag and drop. You just got to select a preset, you slap it on, and then you have this crazy animation. And I'm not even done. We're also offering an exclusive bonus, which is the animated elements. There are 25 plus pre-animated elements that you get instantly drag and drop into your projects and save the trouble of going on the internet and trying to find like all types of gifts, stuff like that. It is already in a photo ready to go. So if that's something that itches, to we're throwing a early bird sale right now so make sure to take advantage of that before the price goes up i also left you a discount code down below now let's get into the tutorial all right let's get into it so for this effect to work you basically need two clips so we're gonna have this and then this so in between is where the effect is going to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is mask out the subject because it is going to be part of our effect in the front. Let's do that. All you got to do is be on the last frame of the clip. Then you're going to do command D to duplicate the layer. And then afterwards, we're going to do right click time freeze frame. And then as you can see, it is going to be frozen. So let's just drag it on right here. There we go. We're going to make it the length of this. And then we can click on G to select the pen tool. And then we're just going to go around our subject. It doesn't really have to be precise that much since it's kind of like grungy, that kind of like brain rot effect. It doesn't need to be perfect at all. So let's just go around our subject. As you can see, I'm going pretty fast. I just went around and created my mask right here. So as you can see, now that we have our subject, we're going to call it subject and now we're going to create our visuals that are going to be behind so we're going to use shape layers to create that style i'm going to show you how you can animate them and a faster way with the bundle as well if you want to know let's go so we're going to select the rectangle tool so we're going to create a rectangle that's going to move so we're going to create like shapes that move it's going to be really cool so we can select it and then let's make it this big let's say let's go into transparency that way when it's black we could still see it well now that our rectangle is done let's say we make it a bit bigger maybe something like this then we're gonna press s because we're gonna animate the scale and we're gonna do alt click because we're gonna animate its properties we're gonna make it wiggle so let's do alt click then we're gonna type posterize time eight arrow to the right semicolon then we're gonna press enter so what that does is it's gonna make it choppy like move every eight frames per second then enter then we're gonna type wiggle parenthesis 24 so 24 frames per second and then let's do 70 yeah so now as you can see it's gonna move all over the place something like that and then we can do that for the rotation as well. So instead of wasting time we can just copy that one command C then go to the rotation alt click command V However, 70 might be a bit too much. Let's do something more subtle, like 30. Yeah, that works. So we have this animated. We're going to cut it, come and shift D, come and shift D. And then we're going to duplicate it so that we have another one of these shape layers. But this one, we're going to make it red. So when we combine two of those, as you can see, we get a cool effect kind of like a collage type of effect. It looks pretty cool in my opinion. And right before we go on, I just want to show you like how easy it is when you use the text animation presets, uh, if you want to do a certain effect that way without doing the expressions and stuff. So we're just going to duplicate another one. I'm going to remove those. So in the text animation, so as you can see, you have 30 animation presets. So these can be for text, but objects just whatever in opinion, it's going to create a cool effect. As you can see, it is static right now. And as soon as we add for instance favorite jitter as you can see instantly it is animated in a choppy style it really saves the trouble of just like creating them over and over again as you can see we got wonky movement this one is pretty nice so you can see how these can be like a huge time saver but anyways back to where we were so we have these two shape layers right here we're gonna put it like behind the subject so we're gonna have this so we're going to have this for now. I also want to show you something. One thing we can do, you can attach text to these shapes, which can look pretty cool if you want to do like a title or something like this. So once you have a frame that looks nice to you, you can do command T and then let's just write text and then just adapt it, adjust the scale. 
play with the rotation so that it kind of matches with the rectangle. By the way, subscribe if you haven't. So now that it's like this, you can parent the text to the shape layer right here. So now it's gonna follow the shape. So that effect in itself looks really cool. You can have an effect like this. You can even like, let's say if we go to Rainrot FX Essentials, you can give it that low quality style that you see in the Rainrot edit. So now we're gonna put these right behind our subject, right here. And now we're gonna go on and create a background for our animation. So actually it can be like any background. You can just press on Command Y and make a white solid. One thing that I recommend doing, you can do a vignette. That way when you have like these shape elements, stuff like that, it just kind of flows well. And you have this visual right here. If you wanna take it up a notch, I'll do a tutorial on that. But for today, I just wanna show you like the bonus elements uh, that are in the bundle as well. So we have these ones. Uh, let me know if you want me to make a tutorial on that, but like these red blocks one, I think it looks pretty cool. And like this trippy grid one. So I think we're gonna use this one. So I'm gonna put it right here. So as you can see, we have this trippy grid that looks super fire. And we might as well add some really cool animated elements just to add to that brain rot kind of style. So, so there are a bunch of the elements all over internet if you wanna look it up and just look like for gifts that are transparent, but I'm gonna use some out of my brain rot bundle. So we have like Geek Mouse right here that looks super fire. I really like this animated tracking box. So let's import those. So now we have all of these right here. We're just gonna place them real quick. So let's say animated tracking box, we're gonna go like this, the emoji right here. Then we have the money sign one. We're gonna scale it up right here. And then the pink tracking box, we can make it bigger, something like this. Let's say we're gonna put it like behind everything. So now, so now as you can see, we have this right here. Now we wanna make sure that the frame rate matches. So we're gonna create an adjustment layer and then I'm gonna do essential low fps if you don't have the pack don't worry as you can see it is posterized time and you put the frame rate to a frames per second all that's left is to animate our subject before it transitions into the second clip let's do that so as you can see we have our subject right over here so what we're gonna do is add a stroke to our character it's gonna make it stand out so we can increase it right here yeah something like five looks good and then we can add a drop shadow effect to our subject as well there we go, that looks super cool. So now we're gonna animate the subject. It is the same principle that we did earlier with the expressions. You just use the position expressions and type the same thing as we did earlier. But just to save time, I'm gonna use one out of the brain rot effects text animations. I'm gonna do essential jitter, just uh, drag it and select it to the subject. And now as you can see, we get this really sick, kind of like jittery, choppy animation. Yeah, that looks super fire so far, super hard. Then we're gonna create a transition where a mask is gonna make the first clip disappear. So the first freeze frame, and then the second freeze frame is gonna come up in the same way. So if you're not sure, just let me cook, bear with me. Let's do this together. So now we're gonna pre-compose our first subject right here. Let's do pre-compose, make sure to select like this and adjust composition to the time span. That's gonna make it the same length as you can see right here. And now we're gonna create a mask that's gonna make him disappear out of the composition. So over here, we're gonna start the transition. We can do something like this, then we're gonna close it. As you can see, we only get this part, but that is totally fine because afterwards we're gonna do subtract, which is gonna do exactly that. We might as well do it now. You press on M, mask, subtract. And we're gonna click on the stopwatch right here on mass path because we're gonna change the mass path progressively. So let's go two frames forward. And then if you wanna change these kind of things, you press on mask feather and then it's gonna let you change them. So now we can make those bigger, make it start to disappear. You can try to keep like the whole like spikes kind of aesthetic to it. So as you can see, it's starting to go away another frame later i skip a couple of frames because it's like choppy because of the posterized time so when the image changes that's when i start like changing the mask now we're gonna make this go away we're gonna make it disappear so let's cut it command shift d and then delete it oh i forgot something we have the spikes right here so right before we animated it let's animate it once again and just put these down so as you can see, you get this really sick animation. And then we're gonna make the other subject appear on the screen in the same way. All right, so the last step of this tutorial basically is to make this guy appear. So we're gonna do the same thing. Let's just, we can call this second. We're gonna duplicate it once again, and then we're gonna do time, 
freeze frame, press G, and we're gonna do the same thing as we did earlier, which is mask or character. There we go. Let's put it right over here. So when the other one goes out, this one is gonna come in. So we can cut this layer when it ends. So as you can see for now, we have this, which looks pretty cool, but it is lacking a bit of like that transition that we did earlier. So before we do that, let's just copy the properties that we did with this one. So let's go in there and let's copy the stroke, the drop shadow, and then the transform effect that we did as well. That way we're gonna save some time. Boom, command V, it is done. It is right here. We're all about time saving on this channel. When you see the first frame where it appears right here, select G once again. So now when you see the first frame where it appears, we're just gonna do pre-compose, call this second. Since it has a posterized time and it doesn't move at 24 FPS, you don't get um, every frame you don't see it. So when you do, uh, let's create a mask. So for this one, we could even get creative. I think what I'm gonna do is instead of doing just like the spikes, I'm gonna just mask like the hat at first. So the first one, we're gonna have the hat rotoed out, which is like pretty cool in my opinion. And then we're gonna cut the layer until there's an image change, as you can see like right here. And then let's press M, let's delete the mask. All right, I just turned off the posterized time because it can be a challenge, kind of like do it without it. So as you can see, I wrote out this out and then right over here, then we're gonna include this. There we go. Now let's say the next image change, we're gonna make it arrive. So this one can be a little faster than the previous one. There we go, something like this. So now there's only the bottom part to develop. So let's look at what this looks like with the adjustment layer. That is super smooth, let's look at it. Now we're just going to smooth out the transition so that it seems like more seamless. Let's do command Y to create a white solid. Let's just keep it for one frame. Yeah, one frame is fine. Basically, basically I want to have a white flash before the effect comes on. All right, so I'm just going to duplicate this one and then I'm going to put it at the end right here. Boom, flash, and then we're back. So there we go. If we want, we can also create an adjustment layer and that is an optional part. But we can also create like that kind of like brain rot filter kind of. So I'm going to go to a few options are you can take a mosaic effect if you want and just like make it like pixelated ish to your taste. As you can see, you can have that result. What I'm going to do is go to my brain rot essentials and I'm going to drag swag 2012 filter. This one is perfect for like that kind of like brain rot style. And then if you combine it with, let's say MP4 damage, then we're going to have something like this. Now let's look at our final result. So that was it for today. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. If you enjoyed this video and if it brought you any value, please consider subscribing. And please let me know in the comments what type of tutorials you would like me to cover next on this channel. If you still feel like learning and want to learn some new sauce and level up, go watch this video right there. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.